Hey, 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 it's Jenny Edenberg from Jenny Eden Coaching, and it's Tuesday. I hope everyone had a wonderful Labor Day weekend, and I'm jumping on today. I haven't gone live in this page in a long time, um, but today I wanted to cover 10 things empowered eaters do regularly, and I wanted to talk about this because, um, as many of you know, I um, run a program called the Empowered Eating Series. Um, my whole brand, my whole company is about empowering yourself around food and around eating. And a lot of people are like, well, okay, well, what is empowered eating? So I'm going to give you a little overview today of what empowered eating is and how you know when you are doing things that really uh, support empowered eating, if that makes sense. So let's just jump right in. Um, the first one is empowered eaters trust their body cues. Now, if you have been a chronic dieter your whole life, uh, a yo-yo dieter like I was for 30 years, um, you begin to lose trust in your own body cues. You begin to, to ignore or lose trust in your own sense of hunger or fullness. Um, sometimes people will eat because a particular program tells them to eat every three hours or not eat after six or whatever it is. Um, and ends up being to the detriment of their own uh, body cues. And when you have to sort of force yourself to eat or force yourself to not eat, that is actually pretty disempowering. That's actually pretty, it can cause actually a lot of stress for our bodies because if we're not listening to our bodies and we're just ignoring hunger, um, it can put your body in a stress response. So that's number one is learning how to trust your own hunger and satiety cues, and just, just trust, trust your body overall. Like any cues or signals or communications that your body's having, you don't judge it or push it away or ignore it, but you actually listen and communicate. Um, the second one is people who eat in, in an empowered way, they try to reduce their external output, if that makes sense. So they're... Um, not listening to every expert, not listening to every book, not on every social media channel trying to um, get the latest info and dieting trends or what have you. But instead, empowered eaters know to actually um, to look inward, you know, to come home, to, to know that information themselves, to start, again, it goes hand in hand with trusting your body cues, but also just you know, reducing the external noise a little bit so you can get some quiet, really, and some time to process what's really going to be best for you and for your body. Um, okay, moving on to number three. Um, this is may, may surprise some of you, but empowered eaters eat for pleasure. And a lot of people that I know, and including myself, for many, many years, food was not about pleasure. In fact, it was scary to have any pleasure with food because it, in my mind, it meant weight gain and it meant indulgence and it meant overeating. Um, and so what I replaced pleasure with was shame and guilt, right? And, and worry and dis, dis, despair and, you know, confusion. And um, when, when, you're, when we're able to actually, hi, Kathy, welcome. When we're actually able to let ourselves feel pleasure, with food, it can be incredibly empowering to recognize that there's no bad consequence to that. And when you learn the whole eating empowerment sort of method, um, you embrace that pleasure. You're not scared of it because you trust that you're not going to overeat. You trust that you're not going to binge um, because you are trusting your body, you're reducing external noise, and you're allowing your brain to experience pleasure while you're eating. Super, super important. Okay, ready for the next one? Um, empowered eaters plan and advocate for themselves in food situations. This is a huge one. I see this with clients all the time where um, you kind of just hope for the best. Like I, I've been a vegetarian for over 30 years and for a long time I just hoped for the best that there'd be vegetarian food and you know, I would be very disappointed or I'd be you know, left with like just eating potatoes or bread or something. And so I learned that I had to advocate for myself and actually plan for there to be food available to me that I knew I would, I would eat and that I could eat and that would make me happy. 
And that in no way does like takes away from intuitive planning, intuitive, not in planning, intuitive eating, um, because you're starting to learn where, when you tend to get hungry, what environments you struggle in, which ones you don't, and then how to like plug and play for the right situation that you're in. And that takes time. It takes um, experience. It takes practice um, to even know that what those patterns are, right? And so empowered eaters really, really work hard to uh, pre-plan and to be thinking about what tool, what specific food tool to use in a particular scenario. So for instance, when I go shopping, I often bring a bag of nuts or like nuts and raisins with me because I tend to get hungry. And if I'm out and about and I'm hungry, I'm much more likely to, let's say, grab something at the um, supermarket um, or, you know, I'm, I'm much more likely to just drop by a Starbucks and get a Frappuccino or something, you know, like something that isn't really going to make me feel that great. Um, but I'm doing out of convenience or I'm doing because I don't, I didn't plan ahead. Do you know what I mean? So the planning part is so super important and it's something that I focus on a lot in the work that I do so that people can really feel empowered about what situations trigger them and, and how to deal with that. Okay. On to the next, this is five. We're already halfway through. So Number five is empowered eaters eat mindfully and slowly. Um, I used to be a super fast eater. I'd be like, <laughs> and to this day, I tell my kids, like, if I see them like shoveling it in, I'm like, hey, what's the rush? You know, like, where are you off to? And it's funny because we often feel like we're stressed and we're rushed, even when we're not, because food has become this thing where we multitask through it. You know, we don't actually sit and eat and enjoy that one activity where, you know, we're driving and eating or we're working and eating or we're watching TV and eating or we're standing up and eating or we're doing something else. And, um, and oftentimes we're doing it really fast too. And the reason why that happens is because um, either we're in a rush where it's out of habit, there's negative feelings associated with eating. So you want to do it fast to get it over with, or maybe you're worried someone's going to find you or judge you. So all of that lends to um, this, this, this natural desire to just eat really fast. And that can lead to a whole slew of um, malaise in the body, GI problems. It puts your body in a stress response. There's a whole um, slew of things that happen to our bodies and to our brains, really, and to our nervous system when we're shoveling food in and we're eating really fast and we're distracted. So there are really two things that prevent people from eating mindfully. And the first one is distraction and the second one is stress. So if you're able to mitigate those two things, um, you have a really good shot at learning some of the really uh, important tools to slow down, eat mindfully, and then get all this powerful, in, like valuable information about yourself, about your hunger and about maybe some of the wounds that you have around this particular food or some of the triggers that you have around that particular food. So it like kind of diffuses the food as, as opposed to having it still be triggering. That makes sense. Okay. Number six, uh, remove random food rules. So empowered eaters know that when they create these arbitrary food rules and try so hard to stick to them, what, what you're actually doing is not honoring and respecting your body. You're honoring the rules, the random arbitrary rules that somebody told you you need to do or that you decided for yourself that you need to do. Like I'll only have two bites or, you know, uh, I'll have this, but only if I go to the gym for an hour after, right? Or I promise I will not eat anything after six and then it's 6.15 and you're starving and you break the rule and then you feel miserable and like a failure and it's this whole, whole horrible vicious cycle. But imagine you don't have food rules. I mean, of course, if you have food allergies or the medical condition that you, where you need to eat certain foods, don't listen to this. But I'm just talking about the average, you know, run of the mill situation where um, maybe you wanna lose weight, maybe you're trying to eat healthier, maybe, you know, you're just trying to make some changes and you feel a lot of pressure to do that. And you've heard about all these rules that you should be following um, and then get really you know, deflated and, and feel really depressed when you actually break that rule and not realize that it's it was just an arbitrary rule to begin with. And so empowered eaters know that it's so much more important to 
to eat with flexibility and with presence and intention rather than random rules, if that makes sense. Um, all right, number seven, have an abundance mindset with food. This is super important. So if you were a chronic dieter, like I have been my whole life up until four years ago, um, you don't think about abundance of food. I mean, you do because you're worried you're going to eat abundance of food, but you actually force yourself to not eat in certain situations. Or you, you know, if you've been on a diet, you know that there's restriction, you know that there are rules. And a lot of times um, what it does is it creates this idea of scarcity, this, this feeling of FOMO. Like if I don't eat this, if I don't eat it really fast, and if I don't eat it right now, maybe I won't get it again, or maybe I won't let myself have it again. And that feeling of deprivation actually can ricochet the other direction and make people bingy or find themselves in a situation where they're restricting and then binging. Um, so really adopting instead of um, an abundance mindset with food, it's all about the mindset, is take some of that energy and, and fear away from this idea that you're never going to be able to have this again. And instead, puts it back on yourself. Do you want this food right now? And how is it going to serve you? And what's, and is it going to give you pleasure? And can you dust yourself off after and, and forgive yourself and show some compassion um, and understand what was the emotional mechanism that had you want to eat that food and feel so scared around it in the first place? So a lot of the, what I do with clients is really just this whole abundance mindset where it's like, you know, you've got to learn how to trust yourself. And the best way to do that is to let those foods be in your environment um, uh, and and know that they're always going to be there to you for you and to give yourself permission to decide for yourself if you want it or if you don't want it and how much of it and know that your body innately knows exactly how much you just have to really really listen for the whispers and pay attention and this kind of thing happens all the time with my clients and when it does people just marvel in it they don't even realize this is something that everybody can do whether you have a history of binge eating dieting, yo-yo dieting, overeating, anything. This can work, uh, but you just have to learn how. That's the, that's the key here. All right, a couple more. Eight, uh, empowered eaters know the difference between um, fullness and satiety. So let me ask you, do you know the difference between when you're just full, like your belly is full, versus like a whole body sense of satisfaction and satiety? I hope you do, because that is an essential tool that empowered eaters espouse and that they have is this idea of like, you know, if I'm just full, like I could drink this whole thing of water and be like really full, but I might be, you know, searching the cabinets in the kitchen. I might be opening up and closing the fridge because while my belly is full, my body really isn't getting what it needs, right? It needs certain kinds of nutrients. It needs protein and fat and carbohydrate and fiber and whatever vitamins and micronutrients and when we um when we allow ourselves to have the very foods that will help us feel full body satiety that's the sweet spot that's what's going to help you to go hours without even thinking about food as opposed to you know the chinese phenomena chinese food phenomena where you eat it and then you're hungry an hour later that may have more to do with msg or something else i'm not sure but my point is, is that don't just eat for fullness, learn how to eat for satiety. And that is a major difference that many people overlook. And it's a main, it's one of them, actually I have a whole module uh, dedicated to this in my signature program, the Eating Empowerment Series. So empowered eaters know the difference between fullness and satiety. And I would love to know um, in the comments, like what's your experience with that? Okay, um, number nine, Empowered eaters become relaxed and undistracted while eating. So learning how to become relaxed before eating is a really, really, it's actually quite easy, um, but it's not something that people think about before eating. And the truth is, is that if you've had a disordered relationship with food, if you have like had a fraught relationship with food, if you have like mixed feelings about it, oftentimes it can leave us um, you know, it can just leave us sort of not, like I've said before, just not trusting ourselves. It can leave us in a stress response. 
where we you know don't really trust anything and we just look outward for all those answers and um when you can become relaxed before eating like you're actually bringing your nervous system from a power, from a sympathetic response to a parasympathetic response then what happens is that the amygdala in your brain it kind of calms down which is like the smoke detector and your prefrontal cortex gets beefed up and your reptilian brain kind of slows down so the reptilian brain is what's telling you to like go and eat immediately or go grab that chocolate bar from the vending machine or to do something like head over to the fast food place the drive through but when you can get into a relaxation response remember stress is a real or perceived threat so whether or not there's actually something external happening or this is just going on with your own thoughts and perceptions and emotions um, the result can be the same which is a higher level of stress chemistry in your body and um, and again that can dampen rational decision making so um, empowered eaters have learned and know how to get into that rest and digest phase into that um, parasympathetic relaxation response very quickly and again that's also something that i teach you in the program as well okay last one um so empowered eaters regularly check in with their bodies so i've had clients who said like i don't even realize i'm not, i don't even eat until like two i'm not hungry I, I had no idea i was hungry and then i'm starving okay so when, when that happens it's because you don't have a clear sense of body signals really and um, hunger and satiety signals um or you're just really busy and distracted and it hasn't become a habit to eat on a regular schedule or with any kind of rhythm, eating rhythm. Um, for some people being at work uh, causes pretty big challenges where there's only specific times that you can eat or maybe you're in a meeting and you've got to just quickly eat something before the meeting. Um, and of course, those are, those are unique situations. But in general, what an empowered eater does is check in with themselves multiple times a day and they check in with themselves and on with a hunger timeline and where one is like the hungriest you've ever been and 10 is like thanksgiving full and really understanding the sweet spot of when your unique body needs nourishment and nutrition and the more that you listen and the more you sort of take stock in what's happening the more you can plug and play and understand which foods are going to satisfy that and help you to feel energetic and productive and, and everything else. So those are the top 10 things empowered eaters do regularly. Um, and I want to take this opportunity to invite you. I'm so excited. I'm opening up applications for the 2019 version of the eating empowerment series. We're going to start at the end of September. This is a 10 week group coaching experience where you get tons of one-on-one -on -one support from me also the power of a group program where there's like-minded men and women who are struggling with the exact same things that you are where we can work together to find that way of empowerment through our eating experience and um, also with body image and so there are really four main components of the program one is learning the mindful and intuitive eating approach the second part is all about binge, emotional stress, and overeating. And then the last, sorry, the third part is about body image. And the fourth part is all about creating sustainable, compassionate habit shifts around food. So using behavioral, cognitive behavioral techniques to change your food habits and, and eating um, relationship with food. So it's, it's a super amazing experience. This year, I'm only taking 10 people because I really want it to be intimate and I really want it to have enough time, enough reserves to give everybody the attention that they deserve. Um, we already have a couple of spots filled. So um, we have about eight spots left and I'm keeping applications open until uh, September 18th. So all the information is somewhere here. <laughs> you can go and apply and we can set up a brief chat to see if it's a good fit for you. I'm really looking for people who are ready to go a bit deeper and to explore some of the core wounds around their eating um, and who are ready to really look inward and ready to return home for those answers. And when you do, it's, it's a beautiful thing to witness, but it's also incredibly, incredibly satisfying for yourself. If you're interested in applying, again, all the info is in 
in the com it's in the comments and I have the application plus all the information about the program. I hope that you'll decide to apply. Please share this with people, friends, family, who coworkers who you think might uh, benefit from this as well. So thanks for listening, guys. Have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.